The occlusal surfaces of the enamel constitute about 10% of all the surfaces. But amazingly, the pit and fissure caries account for at least 50% of all the caries incidence. Now let us know that what is a pit and what is a fissure. A pit is generally a pinpoint depression which is present at the coalescence of various developmental groups and a fissure is generally a clasp or generally a depression which is present at the fusion of different cusps. Now these pit and fissures they provide ideal habitat for harboring of disease producing bacteria. They provide a night for those bacteria to grow, the plaque to accumulate. So eradication of these pit and fissures will eliminate the caries process and the caries opportunity from the site thoroughly by the means of sealing or obliterating the pit and the fissures. Now coming back to 1920, the Dr. Hayat, he did prophylactic odontomy that is modifying the pit and fissures and incorporating silver and copper salts in these pit and fissures and further replacing them with silver amalgam. So pit and fissure sealant is basically a material that is introduced into the pit and fissures to obliterate them. A pit and fissure sealant is a material which is introduced into the pit and fissure by the means of applying and polymerization which further occludes the pit and the fissures. Now what are the various indications of such sealants? They can be the tooth which is erupted of not more than two years of age that is it has the either can be primary tooth or a permanent tooth which has been there in the oral cavity for not more than two years. Further, the pit and fissures which are not carious at all, which are not decalcified or not having a carious activity or a soft base. Then this can also be used in a person who has having a bad oral hygiene or an active carious status that is more than two number of teeth which are involved by the caries per year. Even the non-self-cleansing fissures or pits or deep pits can be covered. It is also used in medically compromised patients. It can be used in the patients who are having stained pit and fissures but without any radiographic involvement of the caries process. Then, no other active lesions should be present in the oral cavity and no radiographic or clinical evidence of the caries should be there. The morphology of the tooth can be aberrant. In such tooth, pit and fissure cylinders can be applied. It can also be used on a community basis or a routine dental health care basis. Now, the pit and fish of sealants have certain contraindications. These are in the case of self-cleansing pit and fishes as if they do not require any sealant because by the means of natural defense mechanism of the saliva, the tongue and physical cleaning factors, these harbor the bacteria can be cleaned or the plaque can be cleaned out of these pit and fishes. They will not retain any plaque at all. If there is evidence of calcification or a cavitation in such type of fissures. There is a breakdown of the enamel from the layer of the pit and fissures or the radiographical evidence of the caries. They cannot be covered by the sealants. Even in the case of partially erupted tooth which is covered by the flap of mucosa or the operculum cannot be pit and fissure sealed. Even in the tooth where the isolation is not possible, the life expectancy of the tooth is less in the oral cavity. For example, in primary tooth, if more than two-thirds of the root is resolved, then in the case of deep dentinal caries 
or in the case of lacking preventive practices. So how can we diagnose the pit and fissure sealants in the mouth? They can be diagnosed by the use of the explorer or the probe. If the probe sticks to the sound but deep, deep fissures, this can be a false positive sign. Generally, sticky fissure is an unreliable sign, but wedging of probe can be considered as a sign for the diagnosis. Now, what are the different type of pit and fissures? They can be either U, V, I, I, K or inverted Y shape. This was classified by Dr. Nango. Now, what is V type of pit and fissure? V and U, both the type of fissures are self-cleansing in action and they do not require generally any interaction or any intervention for the sealant. I and K are deep retentive fissures. The I is deep and narrow slip type of fissure which is present or may also have a bottled brush type of appearance. The I type of fissure can also be branched further at the base. Generally, the pit and fissures are narrow from the top and wide from the bottom so as to harbor the bacteria and to deprive this from self-cleansing activities. The Y type of fissure or the inverted Y type are also very retentive and carry spoon fissures. They can be bifurcated at the bottom also. The V type is 34%. It is self-cleansing, wide from the top, narrow for the bottom. It is self-cleansing because of its morphology. The U type is again self-cleansing. It is generally 14% of the all the fissures. I is a bottle brush type, which is 19%, which is more caries prone, which can be branched also. I and K, it is K in shape and 26% of all. The inverted Y is a bifurcated fissure at the bottom and 7%, it is one of the most prone type of pit and fissure cell. Now, what does the fissure contains? It generally harbors an organic plug, which is composed of microorganisms. It is a retentive house of all the plaque, the debris and the microorganisms which may further lead into the carious processes. The various microorganisms are Streptococcus mutans, mitis, sanguis, salivarius, lactobacillus species and the actinomycosis also. Now they are coming over to the various type of fissures. The pit and fissures which are used can be of resin type. The resin type of pit and fissures contain bis GMA that is bis glycidyl methacrylate. It is a large molecule which is formed by the reaction of the bisphenol A, the glycidyl methacrylate and the methyl methacrylate. It resembles the epoxy resin and the epoxy groups are replaced by the methacrylate group in the bis-methacrylate. The various monomers which are used in the sealants are methyl methacrylate, triethylene glycidyl methacrylate, bis-GMA, ESPE and propyl methacrylate urethane. Even the bisphenol methacrylate is used as a monomer in the seal. The various type of pit and fissures can be based on the generation, the filler content and on the color. Now coming over the various generations of the pit and fissure sealants. The first generation belongs to the UV light cured pit and fissure sealant which have the light intensity or the wavelength of 356 nanometer. That is, if there is an excessive absorption of such type of uh, light, they may lead to incomplete polymerization at a particular depth. This is a major disadvantage of such type of fissure sealants. And even more, the UV rays are more harmful both to the operator as well as the patient. The second generation are generally self-cured or chemically cured type of sealants. Here, an accelerator and a catalyst system is used. 
for example a 3m system a delton system etc are the commercial names for the same the third generation cylinders are light cured cylinders here helio seal and the prima seal are the main type of pitton fisher cylinders they work under the light of wavelength 430 to 490 nanometer generally argon laser laser is one of the most famous of all now based of the filler content they can be either unfilled or the filled unfilled are more polishable they have a better flow the retention is also more but they abrade rapidly which is a major disadvantage for such a category the filled type are more resistant to wear they have they can also resist high occlusal forces but they need a occlusal adjustment and their polishing is not as well as those of unfilled resin type of fillers now based on the color they can be classified as clear then tinted or opaque and then color the clear fillers the clear ones have the disadvantage that at later appointments they cannot be diagnosed properly because they are not visible easily to the operator's eye so it is difficult to detect on the recall the main advantage of such type of fillers are that they are more aesthetic in looking then comes the tinted fissures cylinders these can be identified easily in the later visits the colored cylinders are easy to see during the placement as well as the recall for example helio seal which can change from white to green or pink to white another name is clinpro pink by es 3m such type of cylinder can be visible easily to the operator eye on later recall appointments they have more retention and work on the color change technology now the step by step clinical preparation and the method of the pit and filler fisher cylin can be explained further as the first step is the preparation of the tooth the tooth can be prepared by the means of oral prophylaxis and later on polishing it by the means of the pumice slurry so that the material can be easily bonded to the tooth surface next is the acid etching step but before we should keep in mind that the tooth should be completely dry even the prophylactic paste containing fluorides should not be used for polishing because they may interfere with the bonding of the sealants with the tooth so the first step and one of the most important step is acid etching in this procedure the high phosphoric acid is used from 30 to 80% the phosphoric acid etches the enamel generally the depth of the enamel is 1500 nanometer and the acid etches the enamel to the depth of 10 nanometer only this causes minute porosities in the enamel and the resin flows into these porosities or tag to the length of 40 micrometer depth generally after etching the surface will appear frosted white in appearance to the operator's eye etching is usually done for 30 seconds but in primary teeth it requires less number of time this is because they have more organic content and primary teeth the etching is by the means of porosities not by the means of resin tags so the step 2 is the use of bonding agent then the drying of the tooth so before etching of the tooth it should be kept in the mind that the tooth is properly isolated it should not be infected by any debris food particles or contaminated by saliva or water so the tooth needs to be isolated properly from all the sides and all the openings of the salivary gland should be obliterated by the means of cotton rolls or other uh, isolation techniques or even rubber dam can be used 
Next, the tool should be prepared, that is by the means of scaling and polishing. And finally, etching of the tool can be done, which is done for either 30, 50 or 60 seconds. Now the next step after etching is rinsing or washing away of the acid from the tooth. This can be done by a jet of water and air spray for 30 seconds. The tooth is completely dried of any uh, acid which is remaining on the surface. Even if the tooth is contaminated by 10 seconds from the saliva, the bonding will not take place. So, a further etching of 10 seconds can be followed. After rinsing, drying of the tooth should be done and the bonding can be done to enhance the uh, bonding of the pit and fissure sealant to the tooth surface. Finally, the application of the sealant to the tooth should be done. The sealant in the mandibular tooth should always be applied from distal to mesial. And finally, by the means of a brush or any other operating instrument, the sealant should be spread to the supplemental groups and the inclines of the cusps. The sealant should be flown properly in all the grooves so that even the corners of the fissures and the pits are entirely covered. After the sealant application, light curing has to be done according to the manufacturer's instructions. And finally, explode the sealed tooth surface by the means of explorer, that is any depression or leftover sites are not there. An evaluation of the occlusion is done by the means of an articulating paper so that the child does not have any difficulty in biting. Further, recall appointments are scheduled in 3 months, 6 months and 12 months time period where the pit and fissure sealant is checked for any defect further. Now one of the most application important thing of this technique is that any contamination by the means of saliva should not be there during the entire procedure. This is because there will be precipitation of the glycoproteins from the saliva which will depend or which will interfere with the bonding of the sealant to the tooth surface and the patient will have difficulties at the later stage. Now there are certain modifications or recent pit and fissure sealants which have come up to be like as ACP type of pit and fissure sealant which is amorphous calcium phosphate. It is basically a sealant which is which can be used in the case of primary or permanent tooth, it helps in the carry resistant activity. It is easily available, it is more resistant to the occlusal forces and is more durable. Next is the enamel lock type of pit and fissure sealant. Such type of sealant locks the interlocks the supplemental grooves and the fissures. This is a free flowing and a easily available, easily applicable pit and fissure sealant. It is also fluoride releasing type of the pit and fissure sealant which can be used at the community or the school level. Next is the embrace wet bond type of sealant. This is working on the technology of resin acid integration network which is formed on the tooth. The embrace wet bond type of sealant also works in the wet tooth surfaces or if the tooth surfaces are even contaminated by saliva, this will stick easily to the surface. So it can be used in a moist environment. They are used generally in a community purpose by the means of a pipet which just contains 0.02 ml of the sealant and can be directly applied on the tooth surface. Here cross contamination is one of the most essential elements which should be taken care of. It is also fluoride releasing which inhibits the further caries activity. The other sealants are fluorescent sealants which can be easy to detect in future recalls by the means of fluorescent light. The color changing sealants like Clenpro pink which is white on application and changes to pink in color on cleaning. 
so that it is easy to identify in the future visits and interpret by the dental professional. Now there are salient features of the pit and fissure sealant application on the sealant that is moisture contamination is mandatory. If moisture contamination is there during entire procedure, it will not bind to the tooth surface and will lead to problems further. Inadequate surface preparation may also lead to loss of sealant and the primary tooth requires lesser time for the etching so as the tooth could bond to the pit and fissure sealant. The, it is technique sensitive and has low resistance for the materials to wear and tear. So it is the responsibility of the dentist to explain the importance of the pit and fissure sealant to the parents, the dental operatory, the auxiliaries, even at the community level, to the child and other professionals so that the application can be increased and there is a decline in the incidence of the dental caries.